Hello, I'm Aner Kushnir, VP of Technology at Algosec. In the next few minutes, I'm going to present and demonstrate how Algosec can be used to address a very painful gap in DevOps implementations, network connectivity and security. Network connectivity is traditionally a showstopper for DevOps processes. DevOps enables agile application development and fully automated continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines. New applications or new versions can be deployed in minutes. But as soon as some new connectivity is required, the application developers must stop, open a change request for the network security team, out of band, in separate systems, and then wait for weeks until the required connectivity is established. The solution I will present now is of course based on the automation of network security management. Specifically, we will see how to seamlessly weave the network security parts into the DevOps process. Once we manage to do that, security will no longer be a bottleneck for application delivery, and that will make application developers happy, of course. However, we will ensure that the security teams will still have the full control and visibility they need, and allow continuous compliance to be enforced. And, as a bonus, we will see how the process also automatically maintains a repository of all the business applications and their connectivity requirements. And then we will see how this serves both the application developers and the network security team. So first, a quick overview of the solution. The application developer commits his new code, which then triggers the continuous integration pipeline. This process is typically implemented using a configuration management or orchestration framework, something like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, or Jenkins. The code is then automatically compiled and tested in different environments. And in our solution, we will introduce a new phase into this flow, the connectivity phase. This phase will automatically take care of the network connectivity aspects of the new application. And then the flow will continue and the application will be deployed in production as usual. Now let's take a closer look into this new connectivity phase. So the input of this phase will be what we will call connectivity as code. This is a list of logical flows required for this application to work both internal connectivity within the application and required connections to or from external systems or networks. This machine-readable file will be managed by the application developer alongside the code, including version control, etc. This is very similar in concept to infrastructure as code, which is widely used in cloud environments. Our solution will then check if any new connectivity requirements were declared, and if so, will automatically update Algosec business flow. This is our application connectivity repository. If needed, a new change request will automatically be created by Business Flow in Algosec Fireflow, and that will perform a fully automated zero-touch policy change workflow until all the changes in the different security devices or policies along the way in the network are fully implemented, and this will allow our application to work. If, however, no new connectivity requirements were introduced, we will simply verify that the required connectivity is still in place and then we will return a reassuring OK that uh, will mean that the DevOps process can safely continue. OK, so let's see all that in action. In our example, we will use Ansible as the orchestration and configuration management system. So let's say we just developed a cool new application and we'll call it Best App. As I mentioned before, we will create a connectivity as code file in which we will declare what this application's connectivity requirements are. Let's have a look at this file. We can see here that our application requires four flows. The first is a connection from the external web clients to our application's web server over HTTPS. The second is some connection from the web server to the application backend server then another connection from the app server to the database, and one last flow from the application server to Google. Note that all of these flows are described in abstract manner, source destination service, without knowing anything about the underlying network infrastructure, or whether there are any firewalls in the path or not, or even where these servers are, on-prem, in the cloud, public cloud, private cloud, etc. The developer doesn't really know or even wants to know these things. OK, so now let's run Ansible with the playbook we created. This playbook reads the connectivity as code file and then implements the connectivity phase I described before. In real life, this will be part of the whole continuous integration pipeline of playbooks. 
we can see that Ansible shows that the change was required and was implemented successfully. Now, let's see what actually happened. In this example, I have set up a Palo Alto Networks firewall, and it is in the path of at least some of these new application's flows. We can see that two new rules were just automatically created. These rules allow the traffic to and from our new application. This means that the pipeline could now continue all the way and deploy the application to production, and everything will simply work. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so that was the final result of the process, but let's try to see what happened here step by step. So I'm switching to AlgoSec business flow now, and as I mentioned before, here we have a representation of all the different flows in our application best app. We can see here the four flows that we described, regardless of whether they go through the firewall or not. These flows were automatically created by Ansible through the AlgoSec APIs. In this case, only two of the flows actually go through the firewall. We can also see that the connectivity status of our application is green, meaning OK. We even have a nice graphical diagram showing the connectivity of our application. But let's try to understand how the change really happened on the firewalls. As soon as the flows were created on Business Flow, Business Flow actually automatically triggered a change request with Fireflow, the change automation solution. So we'll switch to AlgoSec Fireflow. And we can see that the first step was to identify which firewall is in path. And we found the relevant one, the Palo Alto one. And then, after that, the next step would be an automated risk check. In this case, we actually see that the risk was detected, some uh, unauthorized HTTP or HTTPS uh, access. But in this case, I defined the flow so that it will continue anyway. It is possible to define conditions here, so in certain cases it, it will continue completely automatically, where, whereas in other cases, it will stop for manual approval. After the risk check, it will continue to implementation, and here the first step is to design the change. You can see that only two rules needed to be added. The other two flows are internal to the application and do not go through the firewall. In this design stage, it is also decided which objects are to be used, which device groups, from and to zones, etc. And now that everything is ready, the change is automatically being pushed through the APIs to the panorama and from there to the firewall. Okay, so now our new application is in production, and let's say we have a new revision for it. In this example, there are no new connectivity requirements, so I'll be using the same JSON file as before. When we get to the Ansible flow, we can see here that it runs the same connectivity phase as before. Only here, this time, it detects that no change was needed, and therefore, the cycle simply continues and the application is deployed in production. I mentioned before that using Business Flow, application owners have access to the information of their specific application. Alternatively, instead of using the AlgoSec web UI, application owners can also use AlgoBot, the AlgoSec chatbot for Slack or Skype for Business. So let's connect to Slack and start uh, chatting with AlgoBot. I would like to ask what is the connectivity status of my application. Something is wrong there and I want to know if the firewalls are to blame or not. Let's see. Looks like the connectivity status is just fine and the problem probably lies elsewhere. Okay, so what just happened here? We introduced a new automated phase to the DevOps lifecycle, the connectivity phase. Now, most of the required security policy changes will be triggered automatically and implemented, again, completely automatically with no human intervention. In the specific cases where the required connectivity is not trivial or pre-approved, it will automatically be escalated to the relevant security team for approval, with all the details they will need about the context of the business application which required them. We now also have an up-to-date business application repository, which bridges the gap between application developers or owners and the network security teams. And last but not least, while we implemented full automation, we did not compromise on security. And the process includes built in all the required checks and balances as well as the full documentation and audit trails. Thank you.